Lovers of German regional politics are in for a special time this week as Megan and Conrad dissect the election results in the nondescript state of Lower Saxony, or at least try and tell the candidates apart. Meanwhile, a survey of Germans' fears falls out of a computer somewhere and Megan has to guess what it said. Things just keep on happening. Of Megan's Megacon. I'm Megan. I'm here in Berlin with ex Berliner magazine and Conrad Werner. Hi, Conrad. Hello. I thought I'd do a little woo. Yeah, no, it was great. I thought you did that really well. It was like in a wrestling match or something. Yes. I'm your hype man. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they are? Yeah, I guess so. Something like that, yeah. Um, How are you? Good. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Uh, very exciting all this stuff happening <laughs> life it it just keeps going doesn't yeah. it it's just wave after endless wave it often happens in other countries i've noticed i noticed that the news in other countries is more exciting than the news in germany quite often like for example the uk and ireland yes. ireland has also has very exciting news the uh the the jig corruption the That's dance corruption absolutely yeah sorry i did text you that <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was the Irish dancing corruption. Wild. I used to do Irish dancing. And like imagining the little faces that we would go to. It is both unbelievable and entirely believable at the same time. Like many things in Ireland. And did you ever win a competition? No. No. How close did you get? Not very. I started quite late in life and like it's a big deal. But we did have some like all Ireland champions in okay. our dancing school, which was run by a very lovely lady. Hmm. And it was in this funny little hall with a hole in the stage that a girl fell into once. I remember that. Yeah. And like there weren't any running toilets or anything. So if you wanted to pee, one of the bigger girls took you kind of around the back of the <laughs> outside and around the back of the thing. But by yeah. God, did she turn out the dancers, that woman? She was great. Oh, right. But not me. Yeah, well, Alas. we can't. Yeah. But we were the only Protestants. That was kind of the exciting thing. Do, do, do Protestants dance differently? We just don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we march. Right. Anyway, right, booze? Yes, uh, booze, yeah. yeah. Um, I have... No, I discovered a new mega can today, which we will be drinking at some point, but this is not it because I couldn't okay. bring myself to do it because it's got some kind of spirit and milk. <laughs> so I want you and our listeners to... We've got to prepare ourselves because at some point, some... Thursday or Friday evening, coming soon, I will do that. Okay. I can't so gonna... imagine it'll be good. Okay. But anyway, so instead of that, I got Lynchburg lemonades because we really like them. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite. Uh, yeah. Great, the Lynchburg lemonade. Fantastic. Jack Daniels. Currently running at about 4.50 in the Spätis, mega cans. Yeah. I think I saw my first five. That's uh, inflation, isn't it? Cheers. Yeah. But you can still, you Cheers. know, get some deals in the supermarket. Are we going? Because we have an announcement to make, don't we? Yes. For our patrons yes. on Patreon. We're so going if to you do want... a, a proper podcast thing. So maybe we could drink your milk mega can in the uh, in the special. So we're gonna. The idea is we're going to invite two of our very special friends. Yeah. To do reviews of only mega cans yes and these and two you friends have brought some to the best of my knowledge i've brought some from the united states of america and so we yeah. have a, we'll have a wide range of very odd drinks to yeah. drink yeah and we are going to review them with two uh, professional mixologists they are mixologists <laughs> they're kind of also the best kind of mixologists which don't ever refer to themselves yeah. as mixologists so the idea is we, we don't we're gonna, we won't have any news on that sh- particular episode but we are going to only release it to our patrons yeah on our patreon yeah. page which will be initially initially maybe yeah maybe I mean, we'll... we've got to give the people ultimately <laughs> what what they want but yes yeah um so if you want early access to that you can become cool. a patron yeah it's patreon.com backslash megan's mega can so don't do that but that's all for the future because now we have to do news <sighs> And we can't do mafia structures in Irish dancing, unfortunately. We have to do German politics, because that's what we're here for. Fine. I love that I've done... I, I, I react to this like 
my students do. So like, I'm doing Even work. those your idea. My oldest ones, I was like, you don't have to be here. Your schulpflicht is over. You can go away. No one, if you're not legally bound to be here. I am. You're not. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So we've got quite a few sort of things to cover in the oh. news, but for sort of lucky, probably not a lucky dip, a lucky bag. A lucky... The opposite of that. Yeah. Did you ever used to go to the shops and you could pick what was in your pick and mix? Like yeah. what was in your lucky dip with a person beside you to like look in the... Yeah, Those yeah. days are gone, aren't they? I don't think anyone's serving out of like glass jars behind a counter. Well, anymore. they're they're not glass jars now and they're, they're usually like perspex boxes, but there are You can serve yourself, which I love. Yeah, but there this is some... a different thing where you go in and... and a, slightly exasperated woman in a seaside town is like doing like no a 27p mix up please no bubble gums so that's what we're, this is what we're doing now with the 27p mix up no bubble gums but quite a lot of. warning of the fdp who probably would be bubble gum i never got bubble gum but bubble gum thinks it's great but it's just horrible and sticky and it smells fake yeah and if you swallow it Makes you feel sick. Exactly. So, what's up with... Where have they been popping up? Or what's been happening? What's so been happening the, in Niedersachsen? Well, we had an election in Niedersachsen last Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, which was obviously very exciting for people who follow regional politics in Germany. It's the last uh, regional election of this year. Okay, thank we've, God. We've had four. We uh, have. We had... Can you remember the others? Oh, fuck. <laughs> um... I literally cannot. Oh, well. Not touring in. No. I honestly couldn't tell you any of them. Her, the one near uh, France? The one near France. Zaland. Yeah, did they have one? Yes. So Zaland, yes. I couldn't remember what... We had Zaland, North Rhine-Westphalia. I thought North Rhine-Westphalia was one because... And yeah. Schleswig-Holstein. And now we have Lower Saxony or Niedersachsen. Mm-hmm. Which is the big flat bit of Germany in that stretches from the northwest coast, the North Sea coast, all the way to the former uh, border of the GDR. Not to be confused Brandenburg. with all the other Saxonies. No, there's quite a few. <laughs> but uh, this is the one that's in the west. That's the main thing you have to remember. Yeah. And it is the home of Volkswagen, which is very important. Ah, because yes, yes. That kind of drives the whole economy. <laughs> sort of thing yes. it's where Wolfsburg is and uh, it's a quite a other Niedersachsen facts are it is it's very good with the renewable energy because they have good a lot of them. wind power so they, they have more wind power than any other German state that's good because they have the North Sea I suppose that's about it Hanover is the capital and anyway so there was an election there and right. the and for the last over for the last decade, it is, uh, the, the state premier has been a uh, SPD man called Stefan Weil, mm -hmm. and he won again. Good he's, for uh, Weil. Um, and what's he like? What flavour of SPD? Well, he's very just like kind of a very pr pragmatic, solid. He kind of suits the state in a way. He can't, he, there was like, he's, he's, he, there's nothing difficult about him. <laughs> that okay. sounds really All patronizing. Right. I mean, and the SPD can he, sort of go that way. And then on the other hand, you sort yeah, of get he's, like boomer nightmare gif. He's a sort of solid pragmatist of the SPD. Okay. And uh, I think that people in Lower Saxony like that kind of thing. And he's had, he's often, he's been quite popular there. Don't dislike him. He has been ruling with the CDU for the last election since 2017. But this time, dun, dun, dun. the Green Party did very well. Mm. Uh, they they gained the most. They gained nearly six percentage points, and they went up to fourteen point five percent in the election. Came third, and it looks like there will be a SPD Green coalition oh. in Lower Saxony now instead of an SPD CDU coalition. It was red before. and red and green. Christmas? Do they call it Christmas? That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they should call it the Christmas of the Christmas coalition. <laughs> no, it's just called red and green. Oh. Shite. Why um, are some of them so shite? And then the other ones are like forcing me to have like <laughs> intricate knowledge of the covers of African or Caribbean flags. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, no Is Jamaica. It Jamaica or Kenya? I don't know. <laughs> I barely know what order the Irish flag colours come in. Um, so it was a kind of a, it was an interesting election campaign because the CDU didn't have a lot to say because they. <laughs> They, because the ah. CDU, they came second okay, with. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I should go I'm back a bit. Drunk already. I'm sorry. Hang on. Uh, let me do the let me do the results. <laughs> SPD won with thirty three point four percent. CDU came second with twenty eight point one percent. 
Uh, Greens came third with 14.5%, and the AFD came fourth with 10.9%. Oh, I love that. Um, no, we'll go on to that. Uh, starting in the beginning, the C- so the CDU were in power. The CDU actually dropped quite a lot of points, oh, and they, they were hoping to uh, uh, to depose Stefan Weil. I see. But the problem they had was that they were already in government there. So whenever they were like criticizing the government, everyone was, and they had the finance minister who was called Bernd Altusmann, yeah, who was their leader and also their main candidate. So whenever they were saying, "Oh, Stefan Weil, he's no good in government," and they were saying, "Yeah, but you've been, you know, in coalition with him for the last yeah, four years," so it's very difficult. You can't really run on that platform <laughs> if so, you're the incumbent, right? Even if you're in a coalition, you have to, I would say, strike another note because otherwise, people are going to be like, "Yeah." And he, also, they're quite if you, uh, visually similar men. <laughs> they're both sort of... Let me Google Stefan Weil. <laughs> and Bernd Altusmann. They're, they're both sort of like kind of bespectacled, grey, white-haired men. Weil In their Al- late 50s, Altusmann? early 60s. Weil Altus images. Um, so... I oh think they're, God, they're, they're the same man. <laughs> they're That's quite... the same. I mean, one of them has more hair. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was quite hard, I think, for voters uh, to, you know, remember which was which, I think. I th- and, um... <laughs> think they were saying the people who were, <laughs> like, and had we pictures in the polling station. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they they like so that was difficult. So what so what Bernd Altersmann did was he tried to run on he tried to say like oh this is actually an election about Olaf Scholz because Olaf Scholz has been quite unpopular with the handling of the Ukraine war and with the handling of the energy crisis and they were he was trying to like make some hay that way right and but he he's also not of... had a huge amount to do with the politics <laughs> or certainly he's maybe had less to do with the politics of Niedersachsen <laughs> than than you Altersmann <laughs> who's <laughs> actually been co running the place and being the finance minister <laughs> uh, uh, so. what an absolutely shit platform <laughs> but so yeah god i hate the middle war and he had a lot of help with this with our friend friedrich Merz, the leader <gasps> of cdu friend of the podcast who was uh who was doing lots of speeches in nina's accent and uh if you recall i was in the um the the, the cdu party conference which was in Never. hanover and so they were doing a lot of speeches and trying to make it look good. And yeah, so then they lost anyway. And then, of course, they said, <laughs> oh, actually, this wasn't a... And um, Friedrich Merz was saying this obviously wasn't a, a national election. It was just a regional election. And it had more to do with the popularity of Stefan Weil than the unpopularity of, of our ideas. <laughs> Has that man ever... So, he must be... He's married, presumably, will he? Is he married? Friedrich Merz? Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure he's married. Absolute nightmare <laughs> to like, what has to happen for you to take any personal responsibility? Not even personal, just like responsibility. <sighs> so anyway, that didn't work out. But the bigger problem for Olaf Scholz, because it was good for, it was a good night for Olaf Scholz generally, because it meant that he kept another, uh, you know, state on his side, yeah. which is like good for the SPD generally yeah. and good for Olaf Scholz. He could say like, you know, look, it isn't as bad as it, or the press is everyone's saying and um, everything like that. But the big problem for him is that the the FDP in Niedersachsen dropped below the 5% hurdle. And that means mm. that... So they they went to 4.7%. They went... they And they lost, like, nearly half of their voters the, in, in Niedersachsen. Shit. I mean, they didn't have many, that many in the first place, but they lost half of them anyway. Yeah. And that, and that really has reflected on the national FDP. I would imagine so, because they weren't in power, so therefore people look to... Yeah, to Christian Lindner, because Christian Lindner is like the most prominent member of the FDP. Yeah, he's yeah. the leader and he's the one who's he's, he's the, the federal finance minister. And, and a lot of FDP supporters, and this is the thing, a lot of people think that the, the FDP supporters are leaving because they don't like him uh, in coalition with the SPD and the Greens. They see themselves as much more right wing, as, as much more kind of libertarian. because I wonder, I'm not convinced that Christian Lindner sees himself up like some of the stuff he says certainly is maybe a bit more progressive or not I mean financial yeah I don't know maybe I don't know enough about it. but that's kind of interesting yeah and he's already started saying um, we're going to try and uh, appeal to our base a bit more on a national level because we're losing voters 
though, and this obviously won't be good for Olaf Scholz and the Green Party, the other members of the National Coalition, if he starts trying to make more... By all means, we must pander to the fascists. <laughs> For the good of the Well, nation. it's not just the fascists. It's also the, the big thing that they've all been arguing about is nuclear power. Right. Not just the CDU, but the FDP in general have been arguing about the these two extra power stations, nuclear power stations that were, they were going to, they were supposed to keep, they were supposed to be, be shut off at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. And now the government has decided to keep them running, but only on reserve for a little bit. And the FDP would like, and the CDU would definitely like to see these nuclear power stations run a bit more. That's, they, keep, they keep talking about how we, we need all the power we can get and we just have nuclear power. But, um, Greta Thunberg was, gave an interview in the German media this week in which she kind of also said this so then mm. the FTP and the cdu were like cream in see? their jeans yeah they were like see even she <laughs> said it even she said it Greta Thunberg <laughs> but agrees with the FTP. no 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 on this one kind of issue which she's yeah. probably just like yeah if the alternative is whatever that awful coal is that we have that just yeah the brown coal and lignite lignite yeah. um, keep that in the fucking ground yeah but the problem, the thing about nuclear power is that um, it's, if it can only ever be a temporary solution anyway, because our rivers are drying up because of climate change and you need rivers to keep nuclear power stations cool. So this is like, then they're, they're, they're not going to, we're not going to yeah. be able to use nuclear power very long anyway. So it is an interim <laughs> yeah. thing, but potentially a better interim than... Yeah. So they've already had, there are already French nuclear power stations that have had to... Um, shut down or, or lower their not shut down but lower their uh their their um, yeah. their output because the rivers aren't uh, high enough to keep the all the reactors cool which is what you need you have to like you have to have a river nearby mm-hmm. so this is like this is like part of the major energy transition that we're going to have anyway what point. i'm saying is that <laughs> when it's the, really necessary nuclear <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear is like a, a, not that easy, is the idea. Anyway, yeah. And the other thing, the other thing we were going to talk about with Niedersachsen was the AF did pretty well, mm-hmm. uh, and that goes against a lot of the other results this year, where they've actually done pretty badly. Earlier in the year, in May, yeah. the last elections were yeah, and they did badly in yeah. the in the in the Bundeswahl. They did badly in the Bundeswehr. And they, I think they actually dropped out of the state parliament in Schleswig-Holstein mm-hmm. in the Schleswig-Holstein um, election. So that was like, but this time they gained um, nearly five points. And is and, that from well, they FDP? Think, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> FDP and CDU. Uh, but they probably gained a lot of because I think that at the start of the year the AFD were doing badly because they had they were really on the wrong side of the argument with the about Russia and Ukraine and it was that like clear that they had a lot of links yeah. to Russia. But now they've got a lot of because now because the people are starting to get really panicky and there were big protests, there's a massive protest in Berlin mm-hmm. on Saturday and in Leipzig there have been really awful um, right wing protests and mm-hmm. other people but they're gaining. Like the right wing populists are gaining a lot of um, traction from this uh, this uh, cost of living and energy crisis stuff. Like people are really um, thinking that you know we can't afford stuff, and then yeah, I don't know should... why they think they have to vote for the AFD. But anyway, I don't know why the AFD. Chaos. I think it's people. It's just an outlet for dissatisfaction. Yeah. Dissatisfaction. I mean, it is disgusting that yeah. the energy companies are just making this like wild profit while we're all struggling not turning our heating on my house is very cold i refuse i refuse to turn it on been keeping it off all this time yeah and i'm in the ground floor okay it's chilly but you you can wear a hot water bottle you know as like a you just sort of tie it with the robe of your dressing gown and then it's oh you should get one of those like baby carriers you could just put like a hot yeah water that would be good like a little <laughs> A little sort of like Joey in my pouch. Yeah, and it's disgusting, these energy companies. But the problem is then that, that well, that I'm just explaining how populism works. <laughs> They're not going to solve the problem. They just want the power. Yeah. And like certainly the AFD are not going to solve the problem. People like that kind of thing. Well, maybe it's helpful to look at it just as sort of like a bit of a weather vane in terms of... Yeah, and also you should keep this in proportion. I mean, they only got 10% of the vote. It's not like, it's not yeah. like they started... They, they were like, they, 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 and they still came in fourth place. It wasn't like they had lots of 
for voters. Anyone else is on the list? The FDP and Christian Lindner, with with if we're if any potential AFD voters are listening, which is the most unlikely thing ever, why should they give their vote to the FDP instead? Can we? Remember, I've just got it written down here that we were going to talk about. <laughs> Christian Lindner did a did an Instagram today. What did he say? He said, you asked for a Bolga ticket, like a follow-up ticket to the nine euro ticket. You get a follow-up ticket to the nine euro ticket. <laughs> so apparently, I'm going to the 1st of January. Hmm. There'll be one for 49. Yeah, although it is not in Tocken and Tuchan. <laughs> Which is then a brilliant German phrase that Conrad taught me earlier while we were discussing things in Trockenen Tuchon. The, the, Home and dry. It's not in dry a dry cloth yet. It's not in a well, dry cloth. they've decided it in principle. So what they did... If was- you send a meme out into Instagram, it better be... The sheets better be as close to dry as sometimes when you put them on knowing they'll dry before you get into bed. It's something like that. So what happened was that the... the the, I was going to say traffic ministers, transport ministers. All the transport ministers <laughs> had a conference because the, the, the problem with all this is that they can't just be decided by the federal government. It has to be decided with the, with the states as well. So they all have to decide how it's going to be financed amongst themselves. I love themselves. these things because it's basically just all the states come together like, hey, you're going to fucking pay. We'll <laughs> yeah. implement it, you fucking pay. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, we thought like maybe you guys would be like, feel passionate about this. Like, no. <laughs> We will implement it if you pay for it. Uh, so the deal they've got now is 1.5 billion each. So the federal government pays 1.5 billion, and the states pay 1.5 billion, and then we will have a 49 euro ticket as of January. Yeah, according Which, to Volker Wissing, who is. I went nowhere minister. apart from BER, which was not the point. <laughs> On my nine euro ticket. But then I also wasn't here on my summer holidays. Yeah. Like, um, I wouldn't mind going on the Regional Bahn everywhere. And yes, but apparently the financing hasn't been completely. Um, okay. It's completely agreed. And um, there's well, not. Yeah, but that is what they're aiming for anyway. So it's like a bit. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, I did notice that the 29 euro ticket in Berlin is um, it's not the same as the nine euro one. Like you can't buy it on the machines because you have to have like an abo. So uh, hmm. you have to sign up. And honestly, I don't know how long for. I've had a a monthly thing. But I think I can cancel mine at any time. But it's like a, a direct debit basically. Hmm. And I pay 29 euros now hmm. for my AB ticket. Well, that's and usually it's 63 and it's been 63 for years. And I didn't realize maybe that people weren't doing this. And the monthly ticket, if you buy it at the machines, is like 83 mm. or 80 some, 80 more. Yeah. So maybe worth looking into if you can spare 30 yeah. euros out of your bank account every month. And this 49 euro ticket will apply to all regional trains across the whole country. Whereas the Berlin one is only for public transport in the AB. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it is. I think it's just AB as well, which is a bit, bit of a, yeah, bit of a scam. But anyway, well, I think that still the problem nice. With that like is it's just, less than half price. Well, isn't some of C in Brandenburg, and then it would be a then that's a kind of then they'd have to make a deal with Brandenburg. Yeah, yeah. Um, C is Brandenburg. Um, yeah. I think in terms of yeah, for practical it, purposes. As soon yeah. as you're in C, you might as well be in Brandenburg. Um, no, I think it. <clears throat> yeah. No, you're. I think Zone C is just Brandenburg, is it not? I don't know. <laughs> we should research this, and we will answer. Sorry, it's not. This is just like <laughs> pub chat. Like, <laughs> I have this ticket, and like, I don't know. Like, you can sign up, I think. <laughs> And I've sort of forgotten the context, but right. just we're supposed to be providing people with news. Right. But um, now we're back on firmer ground because I have the numbers in front I've of me. Because I've got a Lucy. Oh, you've Googled it. No, I haven't Googled it. I'm, I'm just going to leave that open till next um, <laughs> next week. Uh, right. Concentrate. Sorry. Right. We are going to do... Another story, which is... Yeah, we're not on solid ground. We've got a very (laughs) fluff piece coming up, and I'm so excited. What do Germans fear 
the most. Right. So there's an annual survey. Class. Carried out on. by a major like insurance company. How is um, your mega cam, by the way? Great, I'm enjoying it, thoroughly enjoying it's it. Ab- the li- Jack Daniels <laughs> Tennessee Whiskey Lynchburg Lemonade. Get it into you, lads. It is. It's so good. The annual survey by RNV Versicherung mm-hmm. on what do Germans fear the most. Brilliant. And I have a top 10 here. Okay. What do you think Germans fear the most? Is this now, before I start guessing, this is like, what's that family fortunes? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, you say something and I'll say the survey Is it like said. topical fears or just general? No, topical fears. You're, you're, you're more likely to, yeah. What have, and this is... Like now, today, in 2022 is my yeah. point. Okay, and so... And not in 2021. And in 2021. Well, well... They do a survey every year. So there were 2021 results and 2022 results. Oh. What do you think might have changed in the last year that well, Germans might be scared? we have war now. What we fear, fucking Russia? Nuclear war. Is that on there? Eh, <laughs> eh. <laughs> <laughs> Germans That's are not... hardcore. What are they fearing? Energy prices. Uh, what's the noise for yes? Ding. 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 ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that is third on the fears. But nuclear war is Worsening not. Com- Germans are so funny. <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, huh? Well, I mean, well, actually, if, if you say energy, you mean cost of living, then yes. that is the number one fear. 67% right. of Germans said they feared increased cost of living, yeah. which is a plus of 17 percentage points since last year. Just God. That shows you how much that has changed since last year. Uh, yeah okay it, look oh, no. it's fucking like i'm lucky because i just like fripper about my life and basically spend money on things i don't really need like fucking mega cans okay and i'm lucky to have cheap rent because i got in just before whatever the property went insane in berlin but it it sucks yeah how well, expensive things are um not as much as war obviously but if is property one of your guesses <laughs> It is. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Finding somewhere to live. Or... Yeah, that is the second one. Lack of affordable housing wow. is 58% of people yeah. said that they fear that. And that, what is interesting about that is that that wasn't even in the top 10 last year. Mm. That is now in the top 10 and it's in second place is lack of affordable housing is uh, one of the fears of the Germans. Okay. I have to tell you because you're going to struggle to guess all of these because a lot of them, a lot of them are economy based. <laughs> <laughs> I know the economy. It's not like, you know, it's not like what bugs and spiders What else could we be fearing in the economy? Um, <laughs> com- our interest rates have gone mental, apparently. Is that on there? Mortgage rates. Well, n- no. That's Ugh. not on this. Yet. That's the only <laughs> economy thing I know. What other well, economy things I know? They're all relating to the UK. Well, the third one is worsening economy. That's just general worsening economy. What? I mean, that, um, what? The Germans are feared about a worsening an economy. Yeah. I feel like we've, Okay. We're just Any other still guess? making bank, no? <laughs> I just have a problem with how we choose to spend it or who gets to do it. So they're just worried about the economy. They're just generally worried. I mean, these are like, I guess you get like a various boxes to tick. You don't, you don't just get to say yourself what you fear and then someone puts it in the machine. I think okay. you get like various boxes to tick and then right. they say, okay. and they tick it. I feel we could do our own mega can version. We just like <laughs> stop people on the street, like those kind of TV shows in the 90s and early noughties, like... Yeah. Sorry, can I just ask you what your fears are? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other guesses? Give me a clue. They're all economy based. Climate. There must be climate change on there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. That is in eighth place. Okay. With 46% of people said they're scared with a plus six percentage points. Mm-hmm. Um, but two places above that is extreme weather and natural disasters, which has also gone up by plus eight percent. Mm. So since the flooding, probably yeah. in the Artal last year. Yeah. So that's probably made a big difference. The pandemic only appears once in the survey, as and it only doesn't appear. People aren't scared of the pandemic as such. We're they're... done. We're done with it. It's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just says uh, one of them is number five. Sorry, four is tax increases due to the pandemic as a fear. This wasn't what you were hoping for, were you, with this fear survey? No, I thought it was going to be much more fun. I thought it was going to be like... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You thought it was going to be clowns and uh, flies and uh, rats and stuff, but no. It's, uh... You know, <laughs> small talk. <laughs> um, no. 
No. Having to dance to something other than techno. <laughs> no, not the song. <laughs> <laughs> the R and V Versicherung coming up to a, a crossing that you really, really need to cross as a pedestrian, and you realise that the pedestrian light is broken, and you're going to have to use your eyes. <laughs> no, it's none of those were mentioned in okay. the in the survey. Well, I sound like I'm being very negative against German. I'm not. We're one only of them, poking fun at the foibles. One of the number ten on the list of top ten is um, overwhelmed political leaders. Oh, that is such a German. <laughs> thing because is that like uber for it yeah yeah like they they've got too much <laughs> too much to think. oh i'm worried that 44 percent of That's germans said they're worried about sweet, that sweet like uber for it and not like incompetent <laughs> it's not that they can't do it it's just they've too much on yeah they've too much on apparently uh robert harbeck is uh knackered he looks awful. I saw him yeah. in a very brief like clip today on Instagram being interviewed yeah. and he just looked so oh, yeah. grumpy. Oh yeah, he's been really grumpy in the last few interviews cause, and uh, apparently he's, he's totally exhausted. Political insiders say. Well yeah, but that's um, the other thing. It's like, of course he is. So Only so people like Boris them. Johnson run around looking in the sort of fucking bloom of health because he's um, not doing anything. And I'm not saying that as like, I mean, obviously we've talked at length about my weird thing from Robert Harbeck, but he's having, he's the guy that has to try and keep the lights on this winter while being a green politician who's been like, here, see this Russian lad? Maybe could we, there's other, other options. And any, any, hello, I don't think he's great. I don't think he's great. I'm just going to say. And then suddenly you're the one having to organize the whole party. Putin's the only drug dealer left. <laughs> And he's let you all down. And like everyone is screaming at you because the party's going to happen and no one wants to do it sober. And he's like, I fucking warned you. And they're like, well, that's the only number we have. Would you like to hear other ones on the list? Yes. <laughs> Very drunk somehow. One of them is uh, also a new entry into the top 10 is authoritarianism on the rise worldwide. So I okay. suppose that's the closest one to fear of um russia and stuff well is, i think um, it's kind of good in a way when the sorts of people who will take time to fill in a survey by their insurance company are like i'm not sure authoritarianism <laughs> is good it's a great idea yeah okay anything um, else no clowns no the one of them is eu debt crisis and the burden on taxpayers 51 percent of people said There's that an eu debt crisis well you know just i think they're just Frighten of another one, and uh, and number nine <coughs> was is government overwhelmed by refugee influx. Oh no! No, see. Oh no! Don't like that. Forty-five percent. What? People said they're frightened of that. It's a weirdly worded thing, though, and this is the thing with these surveys. They're kind of. I thought, to be honest, this was going to be more fun. This segment, <laughs> um, but it's just been more shite economic politics. <laughs> so. Thanks for that. Um, Sorry about that. I don't have a fun survey for you. <laughs> to be fair, I did refuse to let you run it past me when we discussed this. <laughs> it's like, I want to guess! <laughs> like a child. But Yeah, good. Yeah. That's all of that. There's um, the, 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 I do have another survey for you if you're interested. Yeah. I think it's gonna, you're going to like this one even less. <laughs> oh, no, because you said it was what other countries think of Germany. Well, this is the German F Marshall Fund and the Bertelsmann Foundation, two big sort of think tanky type places who do their own surveys of, um, these are like foreign policy surveys. And okay. they did a survey across 14 countries, including Germany, and basically, they asked um, 1,500 people in all these different countries, so 1,500 people each in all these different wow, countries, okay. uh, what they think of each other. <laughs> 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 but what they think of each other on a geopolitical <laughs> level. I just not feel like, like getting the responses to that. It's, it's <laughs> like that. Whoever has access to those emails <laughs> must just be like, you have the potential to do the worst ever, like, reply all by accident or CC someone in the just yeah. like, oh, no, I've just sent the French. What? And Brilliant. So the 14 countries were like the biggest European countries, plus Turkey, the US and Canada, basically. Okay. And... They all decided that Germany has become a less reliable partner in the world than it was a year ago. Mm. 
And people, a lot of people are saying this is because of, you know, the, the Schultz is prevaricating over helping Ukraine and that. And that was the, basically the only thing that you need to know from that survey. Oh. That's I the main, that was main. I like, oh, they're all... No, it's not like, you know... Cold and efficient. <laughs> no, no, see, that's ruthless. why I thought you... So that's what I was going to say. You're probably not going to like this survey. You're oh. like this. It's a Transatlantic Trends 2022 survey. And, um, yeah, <sighs> uh, it was all kind of questions like such as um, what, do, what, what do you think America's position is going to be in the world in five years' time? And who's going to be more influential, China or, or America? And um, Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but this is like... Um, but Germany is still considered very reliable. A lot of the three most reliable countries of these 14 are Germany, Sweden and Canada. See, so. And that's class. But Germany's gone down a little bit. That's the only interesting thing from that. Um, but again, this is also just sort of perception. Yeah, it's all perception. Yeah, people just put people. Than... How do people feel, you know? Lithuania really likes Germany. Do they? Yeah. That's nice. Well, because, do you know why? (laughs) Well, do you know why? It's because there are a lot of German soldiers in Lithuania right now as part of NATO, part of the NATO mission. So they, um, they, and in Romania too, that's where a lot of uh, NATO exercises are happening. And Mm -hmm. those countries feel quite grateful to the NATO alliance generally. And and, uh, Germany is quite prominent in those areas at the moment. Didn't have any well, funny story. I wish I had a story about like a, a squirrel having his head stuck in a manhole cover or Which something. Which is, I think, the first good news <laughs> story. The first time not, we did this, I, I don't was have just like, uh, I knew literally I'll nothing about got... German politics. And you gave me the rundown and I was like, this is, this is horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's not all bad. I just feel for a country with all this sort of money and stuff, we could be doing a bit better. And on that note... <laughs> <laughs> My classic teacher comment, <laughs> so much potential, but just come on, just do better. And on that note, I've got like one schluck left of my absolutely... Oh, this has been amazing. I've been, I've been really happy to get this drink mega now. Can. Really, this one, I like the Jim Beam iced tea one. It's similar. That's absolutely delicious. I, I would agree. You can't fault it. All right, well... Take care of yourselves, everyone. Yeah. Uh, strap your hot water bottles to your flesh. Yeah, try and Not save. Not di- directly, because you will burn yourself. <laughs> yeah, get a little slippers. Yeah, save energy and look out for the the, the special podcast we're going to do soon. Yes. Okay. Where we just drink. No politics. No politics. We're just going to discuss different mega cans. And I'm yeah. very keen. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to what you are going to say about some of these American ones. Mm, I remember as, a, as an aficionado. As an aficionado, the last time I was in America, I was twenty-one years of age, and they had this thing called Sparks, which was like huge cans, and I mean not the mega cans. I think it was five percent, but like five hundred mils of alcoholic energy drink. It was fucking wild. It's a beautiful country in that regard. Yeah, unregulated. Everything's unregulated. Odd. See, when that comes to, like, fucking drinks, and yes, I'm all for that. Guns, when it comes guns to and cats, alcohol. I am full FDP. Deregulate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>